So let's now look at organic chemistry questions uh, for the lessons that to me here. So the first question is asking, exhaust fumes contain carbon two oxide and other gases. So question letter A, explain how carbon two oxide is formed in the engines. So how is carbon two oxide formed in the engines? Because there are some vehicles you can see they produce a dark smoke. There are some, uh, there are some vehicles which you don't seem to see, to notice that they produce any smoke. So how is carbon two oxide formed in the engines? So carbon dioxide is formed in the engines due to incomplete combustion of fuels. That is simple. So due to the incomplete combustion of fuel, so carbon dioxide will be formed in the engine. So question B is asking, name other gas that is contained in the exhaust fumes. So we have carbon dioxide, we have sulfur dioxide, and we have nitrogen for oxide. So these gases might also be present in the exhaust fumes. Apart from carbon two oxide, we can have carbon four oxide, nitrogen four oxide, and sulfur four oxide. So the second question is asking, draw the isomers of pentane, whereby pentane is C5H12. So remember, isomer, we say that these are structures which have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. So the isomers, they have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. So in this case, we need to draw the isomer of pentane. So pentane is C5H12, that's the molecular formula. So as you can see, these are the isomers of pentane. So take note, they have exactly five carbon atoms and they have exactly uh, 12 hydrogen atoms. So even if you draw the structure, you manipulate the structure. So even after manipulating the structure, the structure must still have five carbon atoms and 12 hydrogen atoms if it is pentane. So you must take note, isomer, the same molecular formula but different structural formula. So these are the isomers of pentane and those are the respective names of the isomers of pentane. So the third question is asking, study the flow chart below and answer the question that follows. So this is the chart, as you can see, we have uh, water being inserted in something which is an ethene ETC. So the first question is asking, identify X. So what is X? So X automatically for us to go to a thin, it means that we are reacting water with a certain chemical back here. Now, this is a preparation for alkyne. This is a preparation for alkyne. The preparation that we looked at, uh, the methods of preparing alkyne in the laboratory. Remember, we reacted water with calcium carbide in order to get an alkene. So in this case, we are reacting water with calcium carbide in order to get an ethene, uh, an ethene rather. So from the diagram, we have that ethene reacting with hydrogen halide, HCl. That is hydrogen and chlorine, hydrogen and a halogen. So that is hydrogen halide. So re we are reacting the ethene with hydrogen halide. So what do we get in Y? So identify substance Y. So substance Y automatically becomes chloroethene, not ethene. Remember the double bond is going to break. So if the double bond is going to break, we say that they break in phases. So the double, the triple bond rather, not the double, the triple bond will break. So the triple bond breaks in phases. So it will break and then you are going to have an ethene. So the resulting, we are going to have chloroethene. So that is chloroethene, one hydrogen and one chlorine. So after that, state four uses of uh, the polyvinyl chloride. So what's the function of polyvinyl chloride? So first of all, it is used in making of plastic substances. It is used in making carpets. It is used in making the raincoats. It is, using, it is used in making the different insulators, the power insulators for electric cables. It is used in making pipes. A lot of things, basically, the plasticky things, mostly polyvinyl chloride is used in making them. Also, the insulators, the insulators that we have. So this is the structure of the polyvinyl chloride, as you see. That's the structure of PVC. So after that, the next question is asking, draw and name the isomers of butyne. The same question as the one that we looked at previously, butyne. So know that an isomer, these are substances having the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. So you just need to manipulate. Like for example, for butyne, you just need to manipulate where do you want to place the hydrogens, where do you want to place the carbons. So they must have the same molecular formula, but different structure. The structure, you just change the structure, and then that is an isomer. So you should take note also 
about the triple bond. So these are among the isomers of butyne. So these are the isomers of butyne. So it is simple. You can change the structure or you can change the position of the triple bond. Like for example, this is but one, but one ion. So we can draw the isomer of but one ion. Change the position of the triple bond to get but two ion. That is an isomer. So you just change the position of the triple bond and then you are good to go. So you have but one ion. Remove the triple bond from the first carbon, place it in the second carbon, you have but two ion, and then you are good to go. So it's just as simple as that to draw the isomers of this structure. So question B to that was asking, state the use of polystyrene. So polystyrene, just from the word poly. Poly means that this is a polymer. Poly, from the word polymer, this means that this is a polymer. A polymer of what? A polymer of styrene. So we have this which is called a styrene from the benzene ring. We have the styrene. Now we have made very many chains of the styrene. So poly, polymer of styrene, uh, being called polystyrene. What's the function of styrene? Styrene is used in making plastics. It's used in making cups, plastic substances. So we have now polystyrene. The function is still the same. So polystyrene is used in food packaging. Is it funica? Chakula na juala, the groceries. So it is used in food packaging. It is also used in making toys, in making trays, in making disposable plates, making disposable utensils, making disposable, uh, like for example, we have the forks, the knives, used in making plastic laboratory equipments. Basically anything plastic, polystyrene fits. So polystyrene, remember, Usiogope Gina, polystyrene, it is used in making most of the plastic substances that we see and we have out here. So question number 5A is asking, state one source of alkanes. So state any one source of uh, the alkanes that we have. So any source of alkane, the ones that we went through in the alkanes, uh, alkane topic, so you say that we have natural gas, just the gas that we have, we have natural gas, we have crude oil, and then we also say that we have from biogas. So from biogas, we can be able to obtain methane gas, propane gas, we can be able to obtain ethane gas, we can be able to obtain the butane gas. So we have from crude oil, manufacture of crude oil, a separation of crude oil. We have separation of natural gas or natural gas, and then we have also from biogas. So the next question is asking, ethane gas was reacted with one mole of bromine liquid the observations made in the experiment. So the observations that will be made in the experiment will see that substitution reaction is going to take place because alkanes undergo substitution reaction. So substitution reaction is going to take place whereby the bromine is going to discolorize. After the bromine has discolorized, a compound will be formed. We are going to have a bromoethane compound. So a bromoethane gas will be formed. So either we form 1, 1, dibromo, or reform 1, 1, 2, 2, tetrabromo. But basically, uh, substitution reaction is going to take place, and then we are going to form a bromo, a bromoethane compound uh, as the resulting compound. So apart from that, we have uh, the next question, which is asking, draw the following structures. The first structure, letter A, as you can see, is 3-methylpent-2-in. 3-methylpent-2-in. So how do you draw this structure? It's so simple. So identify the longest chain. The longest chain is pent two in. It's pent. Pent means five. The double bond is exactly at carbon number two. That's why I've been told two in. So first of all, draw five carbons and then go back and draw the position of the double bond and then populate now the, populate now the branches. So the first branch of the methyl is appearing at carbon number three. That's why you said three methyl and then pent two in. So two in meaning that the double bond is at carbon number two. And that's the structure of three methyl pent two in. The second one is three methyl but one in. So the structure here is but one in. But means four carbon atoms. So first of all, draw the four carbon atoms. Draw them one, two, three, four. After drawing it, go back to the statement is saying one in. So after the first carbon, draw the double bond over there. After you have done that now, now go back and populate the branch. So we have been told we have two methyl buttes. So after the second carbon, draw the methyl, which is CH3. After populating the branch, now populate hydrogens to every other covalent bond around which has not been populated. 
and that is the structure of three of two metal butes one in after that uh, we have uh, the next one which is one two dichloro three ethyl pentane one two dichloro three ethyl pentane so the longest chain here is pentane pent means five so here we don't have a double bond or a triple bond because we have an alkene pentane that's an alkene so draw the five carbon atoms one two three four one two three four five so in the first carbon atom and the second carbon atom uh, draw chlorine halogen and then in the second carbon we have a chlorine because in the statement we are being told it's one two dichloro so chlorines are two the first one is appearing in the first and the first carbon the second one is appearing in the second carbon atom to make the dichloro and then in the third carbon atom draw an ethyl an ethyl which is c2h5 so in the first carbon we have a chlorine the second carbon we have a chlorine in the third carbon we have an ethyl which is c2 uh, c2h5 and this is the structure of 1 2 dichloro uh, 3 ethyl pentane so the next question is asking uh, the next which is letter d is saying 1 bromo 3 ethyl uh, ethyl pentane 1 bromo 3 ethyl pentane the same we have pentane so draw the five carbon atoms after drawing the first five carbon atoms so populate with the branches so this is an alkene so we don't have a triple bond or a double bond this is an alkene so after drawing the first five carbon atoms so in the first carbon atom draw a bromine br in the third carbon atom so draw an ethyl which is c2h5 and that is the structure of one bromo three ethyl pentane so after that letter E, we have 3,3 three dimethyl but 1 in. 3,3 three dimethyl but 1 in. So here the structure is but 1 in. But means 4 carbon atoms. So draw, first of all, 4 carbon atoms. After drawing the 4 carbon atoms, in the first carbon, we have a double bond. Because this is an alkene, E-N-E, -E, it's an alkene. So in the first carbon atom, draw the double bond over there. So after drawing the double bond in the first carbon atom, now populate the branch. So after the third carbon atom, we have a methyl. After again, the third carbon atom on the other side, we have a methyl in order to form 3,3 three dimethyl. So both methyls are in the third carbon atom. And then in the first carbon atom, we have the double bond. So populate the, the other covalent bonds with hydrogen atoms in order to finish up the structure of 3 3 dimethyl but 1 in and then you are good to go so that is that structure so question number seven is asking define the term isomer we have defined this a lot of times so these are structures these are structures having the same molecular formula but different structural formula so those are isomers so question number eight is asking the following reaction begins with butane study it and answer the question that follow so we have butane then we go to step one we have step two step three step four step five so let's see what the question is asking so the first question is asking write down the name of the formula of compounds in a so in letter a we see that that in letter a we are from butane and then step one so from step one we go to a so in order for us to know what is a we are going to look at we are going to look at the resulting product from a so the resulting product from a in step two we see that we have a three a three carbon structure so we have a three carbon structure so after a we have a three carbon structure over there a three carbon structure is called what it's a prop a three carbon atom is a prop so since three carbon atom is a prop we know that most likely letter a is prop something letter a is prop something because the other product has told us that it's a prop so it means that letter a is something prop so let's get uh, back to step one so if you look at step one we see that step one we have a larger hydrocarbon which is butane so butane on this other side now butane on this other side it has split to methane we have a methane over there so this other side we are being told that this is letter a letter a we see that the resulting product we have a prop something so this automatically hits in our mind that step one is cracking of alkene we are breaking of large chain alkene to small alkene and alkene because in cracking remember in cracking we defined it as in cracking of alkene we we split the alkene to a smaller alkene and an alkene that is what we said 
So if already we have an alkane which is a smaller methane, we have a methane, therefore it will mean that letter A is an alkene. It's, it's somewhat an alkene. So how do we know that it, how, how do we know which alkene it is? So you'll know which alkene it is by looking at the resulting product that A is giving out. A is giving out a three carbon structure, whereby a three carbon structure is prop. So since A is an alkene, and we see that most likely it is a three carbon structure, therefore letter A automatically becomes propene. That is cracking of alkenes, check the definition. So it means that butane has been split to methane and propene. So methane and propene. So we have letter A. Having letter A over there, we see that we have step two. Step two now going and forming that structure. So every time in organic chemistry, you'll see a hydrocarbon placed inside brackets, that is automatically polymerization reaction. So again, I repeat, anytime in organic chemistry, you'll see a hydrocarbon placed inside the bracket, like as you can see for letter A, step two, that automatically becomes polymerization reaction. So that substance from letter A, that is a polymer, automatically that becomes a polymer. Step two automatically becomes what? becomes polymerization reaction. That is step two. So let's get back to the questions and see what the question is asking. So the first one was asking, write down the name of the formula of compounds. So we are, the first one we are told letter A. So letter A is an alkene, it's a propene. So the next one is letter N. So let's look at letter N in our diagram. So letter N, we are, we are now coming from letter A. So from letter A, we are dropping down to letter N. Let's look at the information or the options that we have been given to identify. So letter A, we have known it is propene. So that is propene, it's right. So we have been told that we are going down in step three. So in step three, we are adding conch, sulfuric acid, and water. So we are adding conch, sulfuric acid, and water in this step. So if you're adding conch, sulfuric acid, and water, we are being asked, what is letter N? So identify letter N. So remember letter A, we said it is propene. So it will mean that letter N is a, is a product of prop something. So it is, yeah, it is prop something. So it will mean that if letter A is propene, and here we are reacting then, we are then reacting propene with conch sulfuric acid and water molecule, therefore it will mean that letter N is propyl hydrogen sulfate. It's propyl hydrogen sulfate. Because like for example, if you go back to the previous class, the chemical reactions, so we went through the chemical reactions for alkenes. In the chemical reaction of alkene, there was a section whereby we are reacting alkene with conch sulfuric acid. There's that section. In fact, I think it was the last chemical property that we looked at, reacting an alkene with conch sulfuric acid. So if you react an alkene with conch sulfuric acid, we are going to get an alkyl hydrogen sulfate alkyl hydrogen sulfate. In this process, we are reacting propene with conch sulfuric acid in the presence of water. So the product to be obtained here, we are going to obtain propyl hydrogen sulfate. If we are reacting an ethene, for example now, for example, if we are reacting an ethene with conch sulfuric acid and water, we could have, get, we could have gotten ethyl hydrogen sulfate. If we are reacting pentene with conch sulfuric acid and water, we could have obtained uh, pentyl hydrogen, we could have obtained pentyl hydrogen sulfate and so on. So if we react an alkene with sulfuric acid in the presence of water, so we are going to get an alkyl hydrogen, hydrogen sulfate. So that is what exactly we are going to get. Now in our experiment, we are reacting propene with uh, conch sulfuric acid in the presence of water. So that's what we get, propyl hydrogen sulfate. So after that, the next question is asking, write down the name of the formula of compounds, letter F. So we have identified letter A as propene, letter N as propyl hydrogen sulfate, and then now letter F. So we are now to give the identity of letter F. So to identify letter F, remember step one, we began from cracking of butane, to get on this side methane, uh, methane in this side propene. So we are now in this side of methane. So from methane we see that we have step five. So for the step five we see that we are adding excess chlorine to methane. So we are reacting methane 
with the halogen. So we are reacting methane with excess of chlorine. So if you are adding, if you are reacting excess chlorine, all the hydrogens will be substituted. From the word excess, we are taking excess. From the word excess, it will mean that we are going to substitute all the hydrogens. So if we know that it, it, it is excess, we know that the answer we are going to give won't have any hydrogen. So what happens if we react methane gas with excess hydrogen? So we're going to get tetrachloromethane. Why did we say tetra? As you can look, the structure of methane has four hydrogen. So since it has four hydrogen, we're going to substitute all these four hydrogens with chlorine because we are reacting with excess chlorine. We're going to substitute with excess chlorine. So remember, as we said, if we have two, we could have said di. If we have three, three now, one, two, three, it, it could have been tri. But now we are substituting all four with four chlorines. So we have four chlorines. That is called tetra. So since it is four chlorines, we call it tetra. And then, uh, so from tetra, there are four, tetra. And then which halogen is it? It's, it's a chlorine. So you don't say chlorine, you say chloro. So it is tetra chloromethane. And that is there. That is exactly what is F. So F is tetrachloromethane from the word excess chlorine. So from there we go to Roman 2 and we are, Roman 2 is asking, state the type of reaction represented by the following. So state the type of reaction which is represented by the following. And then by the following we now go to step 1. So we have step 1. Step 1 we say this is cracking of alkenes. That is cracking. Cracking of alkenes, remember we said that substitute cracking with breaking. So we are breaking the long chain alkene. We are breaking it to small, to small alkene and an alkene and sometimes hydrogen. That is cracking. So cracking simply means breaking of alkenes to smaller alkene, alkene and hydrogen. So hydrogen comes in momentarily. It doesn't come every time. So it comes in momentarily. So that is cracking of alkenes. So after that, we now go to step two, whereby step two is now whereby we are reacting A in order to get that bracketed substance. So in A, which type of reaction is A? So in A, we say that a reaction whereby you see a hydrocarbon placed inside the bracket, that is polymerization reaction. So step two automatically becomes polymerization reaction. So we are now in step three. So step three, we are reacting letter A, which was propene. We are reacting letter A, and then we are getting letter N. Letter N is an alcohol. So in this process, step three automatically becomes hydration reaction because we are hydrating the alkene in order to get an alcohol. So that's what exactly happens. So in this case, we are reacting the, uh, we are hydrating the propene in order to get a propanol, a derivative of an alcohol. So step three automatically becomes hydration reaction. So apart from that, let's go to step four. So step four, we are being told that methane gas is being reacted to get carbon dioxide and water. So something is happening to methane gas, then you are obtaining carbon dioxide and water. So in the previous class, we say that any time a hydrocarbon will be burned, we are going to get carbon dioxide and water. So if we burn hydrocarbon, any hydrocarbon, you are going to get those two things. We are going to get carbon dioxide and water. Therefore, it means that step four automatically becomes combustion. So step four, it will be called combustion because we are burning the methane in order to get carbon dioxide and water. So apart from that, we go to the last step, which is step number five. So step number five, we are reacting methane in order to get tetrachloromethane. So step five automatically becomes halogenation because we are adding a halogen to, uh, we are, to a hydrocarbon. So a, a halogen is added to a hydrocarbon. So that automatically becomes halogenation. So those are the steps that are in that, uh, in this flowchart. So in this flowchart, those are the steps from step one to step five, which is halogenation. So apart from that, let's now go to Roman three of the same question. So Roman three is asking, to what class of compounds does A and N belongs? So first of all, remember that the identity of letter A, we said that letter A was propene. Letter A was propene. The name ends with E-N-E, -N -E, so that automatically becomes an alkene. So since it is a propene, it, 
it falls under the family of alkenes. So remember that is an alkene. So apart from that, the next one is letter N. So letter N, remember, we reacted the alkene with conch sulfuric acid in the presence of water to get a substance. So the substance that we obtained, remember, was propyl hydrogen sulfate, which is a derivative of an alcohol. So it will mean that letter N is an alcohol. So to what class of compounds does A and N belong? So N belongs, letter A belongs to alkene family, letter N belongs to the alcohol. So A is alkene, letter N is, uh, belongs to the alcohol family. <clears throat> and then finally, how, how can we be able to distinguish between an alkene and an alkene? So this is simple. So we are going to use, um, first of all, we can look at combustion. So alkenes will burn producing soot while, alkenes rather, alkenes will burn producing soot while alkenes will burn without producing any soot. So alkenes will produce soot, alkenes will not produce soot. The other experiment you can say is that alkenes will discolorize bromine water, alkenes will discover, discolorize potassium permanganate, alkenes will discolorize potassium dichromate, while alkenes will not discolorize potassium permanganate or potassium dichromate. So for the potassium permanganate, the color in alkenes, the color is going to fade from purple to colorless. For the potassium dichromate, we see that the orange color of potassium dichromate is going to change color to green. So basically, alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons, whereby they'll produce soot when burnt, and then they'll discolorize potassium permanganate and potassium dichromate. While for the alkenes, they are saturated hydrocarbons, and therefore, they cannot discolorize potassium permanganate or potassium dichromate.